setting up white street frogs. The setup that we're going to do is going to be basically for one frog, one adult frog. Uh, babies, you can keep multiple babies in the size cage, but as they get to be older, they're going to get much larger, so you're not going to want to have too many of them in a cage as small as this. What I'm doing is setting up an exoteric tropical, yes, the tropical setup. Uh, these are shippable through our website for a flat rate. They also come with a bunch of stuff in them already, and the way that they come out of the box is just like this. Uh, with everything all nice and packed. And one of the cool things about it is that it pretty much comes with everything you're going to need. Take that off. So here's the hood, which is going to have your light in it. I prefer to use the Zoom Ed compact lights just because they tend to last a bit longer and they put out more use in the UV for a longer period of time. Uh, these are pretty much my favorite brand uh, and they fit perfectly in these hoods. Uh, do stick to the exoterra hood though because it's going to fit perfectly on the top of this terrarium. It goes there. Of course, it's going to come with a fantastic catalog. Really cool picture of the red hood. And the box of goodies at the bottom. Okay, so what you end up doing is you get this box out. It may or may not be a difficult process, depends on how creative you are at getting the box out. And what's nice is what comes in here is a whole bunch of goodies. So we've got big plants, nice ferns. Got more fig plants, which are perfect for white street frogs. It also comes with a thermometer and a hygrometer. Then here's your water dish, which is great. A nice little vine, which for a frog really isn't going to do much, but it will make the cage look cool. And it also comes with a brick of plantation soil, uh, just to make it a lot easier on everybody involved. I'm just going to use one of these bags. It's already. Uh, pre-decompressed, but that's not the right one. This fluffy bag, uh, this makes eight quarts of bedding. This is just under eight quarts, so that tells you how much bedding this brick is going to make. So, first things first, what we're going to do, add the bedding. Uh, in this setup, I'm not going to be using any live plants. Just because, honestly, it's a white street frog, they get to be big, heavy frogs, and they do tend to sit on and destroy and squash just about any kind of live plants you put in there. Uh, so we're gonna put in a little bit more bedding. And then what you'll wanna do is make the bedding nice and wet. And then, because, obviously, you don't want dusty bedding for a tropical animal. So just kind of holds it down really nice. Um, when you make this at home, honestly, it's already going to be wet because in order to make that brick uh, get fluffy, you're going to have to uh, make it wet. So when you do finish up your brick of bedding, it's going to be moist when you put it in already, so it's not really going to matter as much. Then, because it's a frog, it's going to need nice clean water at all times. So you're going to want to change the water below at least once a day, if not twice. Um, frogs actually tend to absorb water through their cloaca. So what you see happening is that when they're thirsty, they're just going to sit in the water. So this size bowl is going to be perfect for the baby frog that you're going to put in here. Um, but if you have anything larger than that, you're going to need a larger bowl. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then we'll set up the plants that come with this. got this nice fern that we're going to go ahead and bush up. Exoterra makes a ton of really cool, realistic looking plants which are going to look great in your cage. And this we'll put right here. It also comes with a couple of these, which are So these are all suction cuppy, which is going to be nice because you can just put it right up top. Your frog will end up sitting on the glass an awful lot of the time, so putting the, the bushes and plants and stuff up high is going to make it uh, basically provide them with a hiding spot and cover them. Uh, 
The Exoterra uh, kit does come with a bunch of plants. I also have a magnetic let plant that I might end up using as well. Uh, just because the frogs are going to want lots of foliage to sit in. And none of these plants are really that big of leaves, which isn't too bad for a baby. But an adult frog is going to probably want some bigger leaves to sit on. And then as you can see, the suction cups don't stick if there's a lot of weight to them. So that might not work for, again, for a big frog. For a baby, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Okay, so it's not going to stick. So this will be ground cover. <laughs> if it doesn't stick, you can always use it as ground cover. That's a-okay. And then we've got our vine here, which you don't have to use if you're at home. You can just skip this one. It doesn't matter. You can actually build it here. It's going to go like this. And then we have to do that. And then we also have to install the hygrometer and thermometer. This is a tropical animal, so the white street frogs are going to want lots of humidity. Um, I wouldn't stress too much over just how humid it is or isn't. Um, they do want high humidity, so you don't want it to be down into the, the yellow and red range. However, the easy way to fix that is just to mist it. I wouldn't stress too much if it does get down into that level. All that it means is that you're going to have to spray down the cage. Uh, if you find that your cage is constantly at a really low humidity, you may want to get a, a fogger or a misting system involved. Uh, the ZoomMed Rectifogger is an excellent choice if you need something to help keep the cage humid. Uh, I'm going to install this right up front where I can see. And I'm going to put it off to the side. So that way, while I can easily see it when I look in the cage, it's not going to be uh, so in, in the back or right up in the front where it's going to actually damage my viewing pleasure of the cage. And then I'm also going to put in the thermometer. Now for most species, you're going to want to put the thermometer at the hottest spot that the cage is going to get. Um, for these guys, what I'm going to be doing is putting a heat pad on the back of the cage to kind of heat up this foam area and give them a warmer area to go because white street frogs are from Australia and Indonesia so they like temperatures in the high 70s to low 80s. Um, the average home isn't normally that hot um, unless you live in Southern California during the summer um, or maybe Florida. Uh, but with that in mind, you at home are going to want to make sure that your frog has a bit of a warmer area to go. And the easiest way to accomplish that is with a heat pad. Just leave it on all the time. Don't worry about it. Um, so because that's where the warmer the warmest area in the cage is going to be. I'm going to put the thermometer near the back of the cage. And again, I'm going to have it uh, facing this way so that way when I look straight in at the cage, I'm not going to see that there's these two gauges here in the cage. Uh, so there we go. Now let's step back and take a look, see if we want to add anything else to the cage. You know, I don't think this even needs the, the magnetic ledge. It looks pretty cool just like that. So, just real quick, I'm going to wipe down the glass here. Now one of the major differences between the Exoterra cages and the Zoomed cages is that Exoterra has two glass doors, whereas Zoomed only has one. It's a matter of personal preference, which you prefer. Uh, this does make it easier if you've got an animal that's going to be fast and run out really quick. Uh, for what's true frog, not really that big a deal. Uh, but for an easy to get used small cage that you can also get shipped, these are fantastic. And honestly, look at it, you, it pretty much came with everything you need. The only thing I added in here is going to be this light bulb, which is the ZoomMed 5.0 Reptisun, and a heat pad, which is the light and the heat. And it makes sense that it wouldn't be included in the kit because the people making the kit don't know what animal you're going to get. So why would they include in a basic tropical kit lights for something that may not work? Um, so, go ahead and put the light bulb in. And the heat pad. Now we're actually using the heat pad in a way that's not quite the way it normally gets used. So we're not going to have to use the little that come with it that keep the cage elevated so that it doesn't overheat on the bottom. Okay, we want stronger than the heat pad is. Don't use water though. 
So these ones are actually not going to be used. These are perfect for actual glass terrariums, but uh, when you're just sticking it to the back of the cage, like we are, not really that needed or useful. So all you're going to do here is grab cut, take off the piece of backing, and Let's see. So White's tree frog is going to be sitting, we'll just put this like that against the back. And the reason I'm putting it right here is one, it's sitting just above the line of the substrate, and two, it's going to be in a nice little area where it's, the frog can hide behind the fern and sit and get warm against the uh, foam if it wants to. And then I'm rubbing it on to make sure it sticks well. I also had the cord go downwards, so that way whoever ends up taking this home is going to have the most amount of cord to plug it into the wall. Most people have it sitting on top of the table, so having the cord facing down just gives you a few extra. Yeah, I know. That's like, a bunch of people. Oh, it's one of those little details that practice makes it perfect. There's nothing like getting a cage set up and putting on that heat pad and finding that if you had just turned it the other way. <laughs> you would have been able to plug it in on that exact shelf you wanted to. Uh, so, we've pretty much got it set up now. So, we're going to go ahead and put the lid on. And what we're going to be putting in here today are some of the really, really cool little captive bred, blue eyed white street frogs. These are a special mutation of white street frog. So, these are a couple of the really cute little babies. As you can see, they're well established, fat, sassy little babies uh, with the really gorgeous blue eyes. They're, care they're just like any other White's tree frog. You're gonna be feeding them um, appropriate sized crickets. At this size, they'll be eating half inch crickets. As they get older, they'll also eat pinky mice, uh, roaches even. I had one that would eat worms if you hand fed them to them. Uh, you don't wanna go too heavy on the rodents just because rodents are really high in fat, but offering them crickets and appropriate sized roaches is gonna be an excellent diet choice for them. So these little babies here are still too small for a lot of the fun food items, so you would be sticking to just tiny dubia roaches and half-inch crickets. Um, but this one little frog can go into that 12, 12, 18 terrarium and live happily ever after. Uh, or you can set them up in a bit of a bigger cage. Uh, these guys do okay with occasional handling, which is why they tend to make really good pets if you're looking for a pet frog. You can hold them once, to tw once or twice a week as long as you wash your hands before and after. Uh, just make sure you don't pet them. As you'll notice, I'm just sitting here with it in my hand. I'm not petting or stroking it. Their skin is porous, so if you pet them or if you hold them or squeeze them, the oils in your hands that keep them nice and soft, those oils can actually be toxic to the frog. So here's one that's a bit of a golden color. White's tree frogs do change color from time to time. They'll get darker or lighter depending on their mood and temperature. So don't be too alarmed if yours turns this color or ends up getting lighter or darker. Um, it's just something that they do. So we'll go ahead and put them in. And there you have it. That is how you set up a basic white's tree frog cage using the Exoterra Tropical Rainforest Terrarium Habitat Kit. Uh, it's a really nice, simple, easy to use kit. Uh, we do ship it, and you can find everything you see here in this video on our website at www.llreptile.com. You can also subscribe to the Reptile Times and see articles about caring for animals like white tree frogs. Uh, and it's a free, the Reptile Times is a free online magazine that we put out here at Triple L Reptile. All of the staff actually contribute to it. Uh, it's a really fantastic art or fantastic magazine. It's completely free and it's sent to your email inbox on the first of every month. So definitely subscribe. It's um, you're gonna enter your email at www.thereptiletimes.com. And there you have it. That is how you set up a blue-eyed white street frog or any white street frog for that night. Uh, stay tuned. We'll have another setup vi set video or informative educational video for you next week. <laughs>